Welcome back, everybody. Well, the response was so overwhelming in favor of the last video I did showing famous historical photographs that maybe people have never seen before. Uh, you guys reacted so positively to that that I thought I'd definitely go ahead and dive into another one right away. And we're going to look at a lot of photos that you guys suggested to me. So thank you for that and do it again. Um, if you didn't see the first episode of that, there's a link in the description. You can check out episode one and then come back to this one or watch this one and go back to that one after that. doesn't matter. Just make sure you check them both out. This one was recommended to me by a couple of people and this is sometimes referred to as the... Uh, the most intelligent photograph ever taken. This is a colorized version of a photo taken in 1927 at something called the Solvay Conference. And these had happened for many years. Uh, and in this particular photograph, you have 29 people, 17 of whom were the recipient of the Nobel Prize at some point. I, I'm not going to go over every single one of them. You can certainly look that up. A ton of famous scientists and um and really super intelligent people here, but a couple I'll point out. Obviously, we got Albert Einstein right here in the center, Marie Curie over here to the left. I believe the only woman in the photograph. Uh, we have Heisenberg, Werner Heisenberg over here on the right, just to name a few. Uh, so that's one. Check it out and look at the list. You can see the complete list of everybody that's in that photograph and actually what they all did. It's at rarehistoricalphotos.com. Uh, you just look for the Solvay Conference, S-O-L-V-A-Y. So sticking with that same site, there's a, just a classic photograph of Theodore Roosevelt on a bear hunt in 1905. These are a bunch about presidents. Uh, William Howard Taft fishing uh, in 1908 in Ohio. Uh, you know, you don't see many of these non-posed, these kind of like um, photographs like that. There's a guy that we won't talk about throwing a baseball. Um in 1916, Warren Harding playing with his dog. You don't typically see photos of Warren Harding smiling like that very often. Um, there's Calvin Coolidge. Um, I guess these are going in order um, in terms of presidents. Calvin Coolidge uh, in kind of a cowboy outfit. Here we got Herbert Hoover on the um, deck of the USS Salt Lake City in 1931. Uh, that's that's a pretty cool one. Uh, this one, Franklin Roosevelt, this appears to be before he was struck with polio, which was in the early 1920s. Uh, so this would have been around or maybe just after when he ran for vice president on the Democratic ticket. Uh, and you can see he's um, getting off of a seaplane there. There's one of uh, Harry Truman fishing, uh, wearing a kind of like an ugly sweater type thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, this one's really neat. I like this one a lot. we got Dwight D. Eisenhower, Winston Churchill, and Omar Bradley um, firing guns. And this is when Bradley's still a three-star general. So this has got to be during the Second World War. Uh, 1944, there you go. Uh, it's during a, a tour of an army camp. Nice. Uh, John F. Kennedy riding a horse. There's something you don't typically see either when it comes to him. Uh, we got Lyndon Johnson with his wife. Uh, and that is a little bit more like what you expect to see since he was from Texas. Uh, and this is a very famous photograph a bunch of people recommended I needed to show, which is the famous one of the time that Elvis came to the White House and met with Richard Nixon. And I believe that Richard Nixon made him like an official like narcotics agent or something of the federal government. Uh, and here we have Gerald Ford, who was a college athlete, played for the University of Michigan, played football. Uh, doing push-ups in the White House in 1975. Um, and there we've got, oh, the, I, I saw this one the other day. This is Jimmy Carter jumping over a fence after getting off of an airplane uh, at LaGuardia Airport in 1976. Ronald Reagan, uh, very much in the image of what you expect from Ronald Reagan right there. And we'll do one more here. Um, hey, there's uh, George H.W. Bush doing some fishing in the surf in Florida in 1988. So that one's pretty cool. This one is uh, also one that was recommended to me. It's a priest and a dying soldier taken in 1962 in Venezuela. And I just want to read the description of what this uh, is about. This is Navy Chaplain Luis Padilla, who's giving last rites to a soldier wounded by sniper fire during a revolt in Venezuela. Braving the streets amid the sniper fire, offering last rites to the dying, the priest encountered a wounded soldier who pulled himself up by clinging to the priest's cassock as bullets chewed up the concrete around them. 
the photographer Hector Rondon Levera, who had to lie flat to avoid getting shot himself, later said he was unsure how he managed to take this picture. He said, quote, I found myself in solid lead for 45 minutes. I was flattened against the wall while bullets were flying when the priest appeared. The truth is, I don't know how I took those pictures lying on the ground. It says Rondon uh, shot the government soldier crawling his way up Navy Chaplain Luis Padilla's robe as Padilla looks in the direction of the sniper fire. Powerful image. This one uh, is pretty fascinating. It's from 1937, and this is at the time the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, uh, former King Edward VIII, who had abdicated the throne a year earlier as King of England, uh, King of the United Kingdom, uh, and his then wife uh, at this point, Wallace Simpson, who was an American. Uh, this is them meeting with Adolf Hitler, uh, and it's a fascinating story behind all of this. There's actually uh, two of these photographs. I'll show you the other one. Here's the other one here. There's actually more than two, I think, but this is the three of them standing together. Um, when World War II breaks out and the British, led by King George VI, who is the younger brother of this man, Edward VIII, uh, who is now Duke of Windsor in this photo, um, there were some telegrams that were intercepted by the British, by the Allies, uh, that seemed to claim that uh, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor were very favorable to the German cause, that there was a plot to, that once Germany overthrew the United Kingdom and their government, that they would place Edward and Wallace on the throne as puppets. Uh, and it was determined by Churchill and Eisenhower and others that it was all kind of a, a fabrication to try and weaken Western resistance and that there wasn't really any evidence there was truth to it. And we honestly really don't know, but it has led to the speculation that there was a lot of Nazi sympathy uh, among uh, Edward and Wallace uh, toward them. So we don't know for sure, but still a powerful, powerful photograph. This is just one of several photographs that were taken on board the Carpathia uh, on the morning of April 15, 1912. This is lifeboat number six from the Titanic. These are survivors of the Titanic about to be rescued. Lifeboat number six. And one of the things people don't know is that... Uh, there were actually some people who made it into lifeboats but still died. By the time Carpathia picked up the 700 or so survivors, there were three people who had died in the lifeboats from exposure. And you remember, these are people who have been pulled out of like 30 degree water uh, where you can die within minutes anyway. And so you know, by the time they were out in the cold for several more hours waiting to be rescued, they died. And then there was one more who actually died on board the Carpathia as it was returning to New York City. And there are several other photographs like this showing the passengers on the deck uh, after they've been rescued. Excuse me, rescued. Uh, incredible stuff. Now, speaking of famous ships that sank during that decade, this is a photo uh, that was taken in 1915. This is in Ireland, and this is a mass grave of victims of the sinking of the Lusitania. In May of 1915, these were bodies that were recovered, uh, probably from the water, uh, who had drowned but were later recovered. And uh, same thing was true with Titanic. You know, there were hundreds and hundreds of bodies that were recovered in the water. Um, a lot of those were buried at sea, but some of them were taken to Halifax in Canada and reburied there. But uh, just gives you a little bit of a sense of the humanity involved here and that these weren't just numbers. These were human lives. We talk a lot about the atomic bombs dropped on Japan during World War II, but uh, maybe not so much about some of the other cities that were devastated during the war in Japan, in Germany, in other places. Uh, devastation caused by both sides. And this particular image was taken in Dresden, in Germany, showing the aftermath of the fire bombing. Uh, these incendiary bombs that were dropped on the city of Dresden and just incinerated everything that it could and this is the remnants this is what you see left after these massive fires not only destroyed almost everything but many people as well uh, powerful image this one's powerful in a different way this one shows one of the most powerful and influential men of the 19th century in the last hours of his life this is otto von bismarck and there's a 
interesting story behind this, but I show this photo because it shows us the fragility of human life. You know, we see these photographs of great people like Otto von Bismarck in their prime, looking strong, looking majestic, but we forget sometimes that these were human beings who grow old and frail and whose bodies eventually fail like all of ours do. Uh, so a couple of photographers bribed uh, a caretaker at Otto von Bismarck's home uh, in order to gain access. They snuck in at four o'clock in the morning and took these photographs. Uh, they were eventually caught while trying to sell the pictures to the media. Bismarck died, I believe, the day this photo was taken. Um, they were they were caught trying to sell the pictures to the media and actually uh, the photographers along with the person they bribed were all sentenced to prison uh, for doing this. This is a crazy cool picture. I did not know existed until one of you told me about it. So thank you for that. That's why we do this stuff because we get to learn together. I never saw this photograph before. This was taken right before President James Polk left the White House, I believe in 1849. Uh, and it's taken at the White House. Uh, right here we see President James Knox Polk. I uh, believe this is his wife right here. There's a number of, uh, I think we know just about everybody in this photograph, but what's amazing about this is you have Polk and his wife. You have over here on the left, then Secretary of State, future President James Buchanan uh, there on the left. And then over here, kind of a little bit of a blurry face, is former First Lady Dolly Madison. And if you look at pictures of Dolly Madison, you can recognize right away that that's her. And what's especially touching about this photograph is that within a few months of when this picture was taken, both President Polk and Mrs. Madison would be dead. Uh, this is probably, if not the last, one of the last photos ever taken, but fascinating with all of these people, two presidents and, uh, and a former first lady, all in one photograph. So someone suggested to me that I should show some photographs from the German occupation of the Channel Islands. See, the Germans did indeed occupy British territory during the Second World War. And this is a powerful photograph because it shows German troops, a band, marching. And you can see very clearly Lloyd's Bank in the background. You know, it's just a kind of a preview of what might have been if they had been able to take that territory. And I'll show you one more. Uh, yeah, what might have been, imagine if they had occupied mainland England. But there you go, Edwards, uh, Charing Cross Bazaar, tobacco, jewelry, and fancy goods. Uh, and you have German soldiers occupying British territory. Really crazy stuff. This was one I almost showed in the first episode of this, and some of you suggested it to me. It's, uh, it's known as the Eyes of Hate photograph, and it's not this photograph. You see, this is Joseph Goebbels, who is the Minister of Propaganda. Uh, for the Germans during uh, the 1930s and 40s. Uh, and you see him smiling nicely for the photo. This was all during a League of Nations session, uh, I believe in 1933, right after they came to power. Uh, but at some point during these photographs that are being taken, he is told that the photographer is Jewish. And right after that, then, you see this chilling stuff i mean it really is and it just shows the hate that was in the hearts of some of these people and uh oh, that's all i'll say about that if you're a fan of musical theater at all and you're familiar with les miserables this one is going to make sense to you um, in 1848 uh, all around europe there were a series of revolutions that broke out and one of those was in france Thousands of people died in a failed uprising in 1848. And as part of that uprising, as you see in Les Miserables, there are these barricades that are built by the rebels. And this is a photograph taken of those barricades uh, that existed during that revolution. Just really amazing photograph that I had no idea existed until one of you told me about it. Uh, there's actually a couple of other photographs. The quality is not fantastic, but there's some where you can actually see soldiers in the streets during all of this. Really neat stuff. I saw this one. I just got chills because I'm so intimately familiar with this story. And it's always just been one that really touched me. This is 
Otto Frank, uh, the father of Anne Frank, um, in the place that they hid for two years after the war was over, after his wife and his two daughters had died uh, in German camps, and he alone survived, coming back to the place where they hid for their lives and where he spent his last moments with his family. This one is a colorized version of an iconic photograph probably a lot of you have seen. These are soldiers stepping onto Omaha Beach on D-Day, but it's colorized and it's just amazing that we have this, that we have such a photograph in existence. Just look at it. Just imagine what was going on at this moment. Now this one here is from a series of photographs uh, taken in 1870 that claim to show actual fighting during the Battle of Sedan, which was the decisive battle of the Franco-Prussian War, the Franco-German War uh, in 1870. Uh, there's a whole series of these photographs, there's uh, like six or seven at least that I've seen. Uh, and they claim to show the actual fighting, but there are a lot of questions about whether or not that's the case or whether these were staged afterwards for the camera to show what the fighting would have looked like. Uh, it definitely, these photos were definitely taken on those locations. They were definitely taken with real troops. But it's never been definitively uh, like concluded whether or not they're real. Uh, and you can actually see fingerprint in this particular photograph. But check them out for yourself. Um, they're fascinating either way. They're a fascinating look at a very consequential moment in history uh, taken on the sites where some of this fighting took place. And the last one we're going to look at in today's episode of this, this is a photograph taken outside the room during the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. These are people, uh, obviously military officers, there's a civilian there, uh, standing up on a couch trying to get a view of what's going on inside of the room. One of the most consequential moments uh, in the history of the world, certainly in the history of the 20th century, uh, happening just out of view from us in that one. So if you have more suggestions of photos you think I should take a look at, uh, please let me know that. Keep in mind, there are a lot of photographs I would probably show, but try to keep this a family-friendly channel and try to keep away from some of the more gruesome and things like that. And there are some of those kinds of photographs out there too but we won't be covering those. So uh, if you didn't, like I said before, check out the other episode of this. I'll throw up some links to some other videos you can check out as well. Thanks for watching.